All right, folks, uh, it's been a while since I've given you all a little video, but uh, <clears throat> I think I'll call this one how to or what to do with crystallized honey. Now, what I've got here are five gallon buckets that I've been storing my honey in outside, and it started to set up just a little bit in the bottom of the bucket. It's still not even solid, but I have this thick layer, about an inch thick at the bottom of the bucket that's wanting to crystallize. Now, Typically what you do to fix it is simply heat the honey. However, what I've found is when you heat the honey back up and you don't want to heat it hot, you just want to heat it back to you know 95 degrees or so, which would be the normal hive temperature. You don't want to go too much above that. Um, but what I've found is after you heat it back up, even when you stir it really well, you still have a kind of gritty texture, which I'm okay with, I'm fine with. Um, but you know, I try to get it back to that nice, smooth uh, liquid honey texture if I can. So here's what I'm doing. First thing I've got is what's called a pail heater. And I found this one, I know the lighting's not very good, but I found this pail heater through a company online called Gordo Sales, and I'll put a link below the video on uh, you know, a link to their website. The reason I picked this particular pail heater is because it has this adjustable thermostat that goes from basically, it starts at, y'all probably can't see it, but it starts at 50 and it goes to 160. So the hottest it says it'll go is 160, which I believe in general to pasteurize something, you have to hold it at 165 to 170, somewhere in there. It changes with the food and the source, but basically I can't accidentally pasteurize stuff. And that's what I don't want to do. My, <coughs> my goal is to keep it around high temperature. And as you can see, the, the temperature setting is what it'll be on the bottom. I've got it about 90, 95 degrees. So. Um, so I can feel the temperature difference at 70 degrees in the house. I can feel the honey's warmer, and that's what I want. So the first step is the pail heater. If you're looking on Gordo sales, be careful. They have two of these pail heaters for a five-gallon bucket. They look identical, but make sure you get the one that is for a plastic bucket. I bought the wrong one on accident. didn't realize it. At first, I had the one for metal. Of course, when I pull it out of the package, it says on the tag very boldly, not for non-metallic surfaces. Slapped it on the bucket anyway, and within about 30 seconds, I had started to melt the bucket. So it got very hot very fast. So I ripped it off, sent it back, everything was okay. Um, got the right one, and it works great. The other one went up to 400 degrees. That was the difference, which I set it on like 95, but it was a wattage issue, so it was really cranking the power to it. Anyway, got it fixed. Gordosales.com, thing works great. Second step is to be able to stir the honey. I can't reach down in this bucket and stir it by hand or with a spoon effectively. So what I got was just your standard paint stirrer. Just went to a hardware store, got a paint stirrer for a five gallon bucket, strap it on the end of my drill here, and uh, whips it up. So I've had this honey heating now for two days. The first day I set the thermostat on about 80 to let it start warming up, and the second day I turned it to 95. And now we'll just uh, give it a stir. Start off kind of slow. And then I'll crank it out. And this thing actually, the honey so this is it actually took a, a little bit of full fat and cooking down from me. So just cut it off of that. But you know, just, just stir it and I'll sit here and I'll stir it for 10, 15 minutes, whatever, as much as I can possibly do. And that's to try to break up those thicker sugar crystals that otherwise would just kind of want to precipitate back out and give you that creamy texture. Um so yeah, that's pretty much what you gotta do. I mean, for the again, for the general consumer that has a jar of honey on the counter such as this one i've got honey all over the place this jar of honey let me get some lighting on it for you is basically solid it did you know turn it over and uh i can't get an air bubble to come to the top it is it's solid so for this take it put it in just a pan put a pan on your stove just like how you melt chocolate or melt marshmallows put a pan with hot water warm water again not boiling just hot Loosen the lid just a little bit. Some folks will actually take this band off and set the band under the jar and set the jar on top of that just to give them a little more displacement. But you just don't want the bottom of the jar in direct contact with the heat source as it can scald the honey. So the water, having it in the water helps dissipate and <coughs> sort of soften that heat. But then you just get, you know, get your water temperature where it's, you know, about 100 degrees or so and then you just a waiting game. And you'll actually see, I've done it in the past where I fill the water up only halfway on purpose and I'll have liquid honey in the bottom of the jar with a slug of uh, crystallized honey floating on top. So again, if you're the general consumer, you got it in the jar, heat it up gently. Do not microwave it, especially if it's raw honey, because microwave is going to kill off your beneficial bacteria and enzymes. That's the whole point of raw honey. So you need to heat it properly with water. 
The other number one thing I tell people is as badly as you want to, when your honey turns solid, do not add water. And you have to think about it logically in your head. If it's been in the cabinet for several months, you haven't taken the lid off, where could the water have gone? It hasn't gone anywhere. It's just bound up in the sugar crystal molecules. Heating it up breaks those molecules back down, which is a chemistry lesson for you. Let's it turn back to a nice liquid. So, heat it gently. Give it a little stir. Again, it's probably going to be a little grainy, but that's okay. It's nothing wrong with it. It's not rotten. It's not spoiled. Uh, still works great. If you got it in a five gallon bucket, get you the pail heater. I want to say it was $120, I think. They had free shipping. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, the uh, paint starter is like seven, eight bucks. So not bad. Obviously, most of you guys who watch my videos probably aren't storing your honey in five gallon buckets, so this doesn't really matter to you, but hey, go buy a whole bunch of jars and pour them into a bucket, and then you can do it and say, I did it, had fun. Anyway, hope this helps some of you guys. I hope nobody's out there throwing away honey because they think that it is spoiled. Uh, the last thing you can do, if you just are scared or you don't want to eat anyway, is you can heat your honey back up. If you, if you do have honeybees that you'd like to feed, heat it up to get it back to a liquid state, <laughs> and then you can add a little bit of water or a little bit of one one sugar syrup to it, and then feed it back to the bees. The only reason I say to add a little something to it then is just to help lower that viscosity a little bit because it is going to want, once it crystallizes, it's going to want to recrystallize again relatively soon. Um, so if you're wanting to feed it back and it's cool outside and you want to be able to be able to, the bees to be able to get it quickly, just add a little something to it to help thin it down a little bit and they'll be able to take it out of that feeder a little bit easier. So again, hope it helped. Hope you all learned something. Uh, if you like it, you know, do all the good stuff. Subscribe, thumbs up, whatever you want to do. And uh, questions, comments, put them below, and I'll try my best to answer them in a timely manner. One more thing, if you are using the drill like this, just be careful. If you've got this thing all the way down in the bucket, and if you pick your drill up and you get to stirring on it, and then you decide you're going to get creative and you're going to lift up on the drill, that honey's going to be stuck all over that rod and you're going to sling it all over your legs. I'm not saying that I did do that. There's a good chance that I did. Um, but, you know, I refuse to admit that I mess up. But you all know it's not true because I always tell you when I messed up. Anyway, just save yourself a sticky mess. If you're going to come up out of the bucket like that, you can do it. Just make sure you've got a little bit of freeboard on your bucket so when that honey slings, it hits the edge and then runs back in and come up slowly. Okay, good luck.